Hi, Martha, and thank you so much for joining us in our Inspiring Women series. Hi, Sam. How are you this morning? I'm well. So, Martha, would you like to start with telling us a little bit about um, your role at the Mass Hire Cape and Islands Career Center, just for our viewers who might not be familiar with what you do there? I know it, just a brief, um, quick overview. So my name is Martha Brzezicki, and I am um, the Career Center Manager here at the Mass Hire Cape and Islands Career Center. And primarily what I am charged with is making sure that our job seekers are getting what they need um, to move forward into employment, <laughs> training, or what have you. Um, so uh, that's kind of what I do here is oversee um, all of the operations here at the Career Center. Thank you. And so Martha, when you began your career there, how long have you been at the Career Center? I have been part of JTEC, which is the Job Training and Employment Corporation, for over 35 years. Okay, uh, okay. So I started as a um, summer youth counselor, um, and I have um, gone through from being a youth counselor to being a youth services coordinator to being um, a vice president um, with JTEC. Wow. Okay, so did you ever imagine that you would be in that role that you are in now? Did you see yourself following this career path when you were a young woman? Uh, no, actually not, because I went to school and got my bachelor's degree to be a teacher. Oh, no. Um, so, and I did teach in the city of Springfield okay. um, for quite a few years. And then I also worked for the Hampshire Educational Collaborative um, in South Hadley. So I did um, more teaching than anything else. So in my, the beginning of my career, I never thought that I would be working in a nonprofit. Um, I actually thought that I would, you know, end my career in a school system um, instead of uh, being in a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So now can you talk about, has anybody ever motivated you and what motivates you to kind of step up and become that leader in the leadership role that you're in now? I think that for me, it was a natural progression. Um, it wasn't something that I sought after um, to become a supervisor or to become someone that oversees different programs. Uh, I think that it just, um, for lack of a better word, it, it just was the natural progression of how my career at the time was moving. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I've been in this particular position for probably 25 years. Oh, okay. um, so in the beginning, it was just a natural progression to, um, to become a leader in the mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm. And now I know the Career Center Director is a female as well. Do you feel there are benefits of having women in leadership roles? I think it's really important that we have women in leadership roles for a variety of reasons. I think that women bring a different perspective to the table. Um, they see things differently than men. Um, men are very, um, and I'm going to say it this way, they are more um, concrete, whereas women are more looking at different options usually. Mm -hmm. um, men are more, it's yes or no. Women, I think, are more like maybe. I also think that having a woman running an organization, um, especially in the situation that I'm in, um, the president of JTEC has always been very, very um, encouraging to families. So to give you an example, when I have my children, I always will say I had my children with her. I mean, I, my first daughter, when she was born, she was in the office with me for six months. Oh. Um, when my second child was born, she was in the administrative offices with my boss all day um, oh. and her administrative assistants. So um, that allowed me to be able to grow in my career. Um, it helped the organization as well. But I think that it was really important that I was working for another woman who also had children, even though her children were much older than mine. Mm -hmm. She understood what it was like to be a mother in the working world and have a job with a lot of responsibilities. Absolutely. I think it allows us to connect with one another. If there's that certain flexibility. And like you said, we have that opportunity to think out of the box. Um, yeah. So... And now what benefits have you received from your leadership role? Um, I think for me, I always have believed that the answer is in the room um, with any group of people that I'm with. And so it has 
helped me to see things differently. Um, as I've gotten older in the world of work, I enjoy listening to different perspectives, perspectives from different young women as mm -hmm. to how they see things. So um, for me, it's always been a learning thing and I've always wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that that is how it's benefited me in seeing things differently and being open to how people see things. I love that. And now what is one thing you wish you knew earlier in your career? One thing I wish <laughs> I knew earlier in my career was that people are human. I think sometimes when you're young and you're getting started, you want things to be, and if you're highly motivated, you want things to be perfect mm -hmm. and you want to do a really good job and you have that work ethic or, you know, what people say, you know, the fire in the belly to do well. Um, sometimes I think that stops us from understanding that everybody's human right. um, and that mistakes are possible. Um, and mistakes just bring opportunities. I wish that I had not been so stressed out about those kinds of things in my younger years. Mm -hmm. That's that's great advice. Certainly, I'm listening to these helpful tips as well. Um, you should be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how can leaders provide useful mentorship to women to help them advance in their career? I think that just by listening. Um, I think that by listening and kind of, you know, discerning where that individual is coming from, um, I think that conversations can be very uh, fruitful uh, because you can kind of sift through and understand where someone's coming from um, without being overbearing. And I think sometimes um, women in particular, we are always trying to fix something. Um, so if somebody brings up a challenge, we always will jump in and try to fix it. And I think sometimes when you're mentoring someone, that individual really needs to figure it out for themselves. Not that you're not going to give them advice, right. but you shouldn't be jumping to fix, right. Um, right. which I think women do in general. Mm -hmm. And on the topic of mentorship, did you have a mentor? Um, I don't think that I had an actual formal mentor, mm -hmm. but I have worked for the same individual for over 35 years. Mm -hmm. So I think that I did learn a lot from her. Mm -hmm. And if I was going to say that there was a mentor in my career, I would say that it was her. Mm -hmm. And did anybody inspire you along the way, whether it was back when you were in education or when you were in the career center? Has anybody inspired you? And if so, can you tell us why? Well, I think that the person that inspired me the most in the world of work was my father. Um, and I come from a family that um, I'm second generation, but my father was first generation here in this country. And with that came a very strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was instilled um, in me as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that it was my father that motivated me and also inspired me because none of us were ever afraid to work. Mm -hmm. And I think as my father was a role model that ran a business with 250 employees, he was a model to those folks as well, because he always did whatever job it was, yeah. um, whether it was emptying the trash or, you know, um, making copies. And so that I think was instilled in me too, that, you know, you need to be the leader, you need to do the hard jobs the dirty jobs and the ugly jobs, just like anyone else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And have you drawn any professional inspiration from other female leaders? I know you well, talked think, about, go ahead. I think on the Cape, you know, we're really lucky. We have a lot of female yeah. leaders in the nonprofit world, but mm -hmm. also in the private business world. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that that might not be the norm in other parts of you know, Massachusetts or even other parts of the country. And so when you're looking at all of these female leaders, I think that it is great for young women who live on the Cape and Islands that can see that they can also be a leader mm -hmm. as they go forward in their careers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And now I know you take on many different tasks and variety at, varieties of responsibilities at the Career Center. So how do you balance work and life? Well, you don't. So, um, <laughs> okay. I, I think that I think that with the work-life balance, 
um, especially during COVID, there hasn't been any real um, line of what's work and what's not work. Um, I think when many of us were working from home, I know for myself, I would start earlier in the day, earlier in the morning, and I would work later into the evening. Mm -hmm. um, now that we're back in the office full time, I make myself leave at the end of the day mm -hmm. versus staying longer. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that sometimes we really need to do some self-care. And again, I'm not sure that that's something that women have always done. Um, and so, you know, for people to take some time to go outside and breathe during the day, I think is really positive and very, very um, critical mm -hmm. to people's success to be recharged. Mm -hmm. But the work-life balance has always been, um, you know, a, a challenge for everybody. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think the solution to it is different for everybody too. But like you said, self-care is certainly critical and self-care for everybody is different. So um, right. now as our last question, what advice would you give to the next generation of female leaders? I think that for women, younger women, um, not to be afraid to lead. Um, and as life has gone on, even for me and speaking to younger women that have worked for me, um, you know, the, the phrase lean in, don't lean out. And I think that if people, if women want to become leaders, and I'm not sure that everybody does, and I'm not sure that it happens for everyone, mm -hmm. but lean into the conversations and not to be afraid to voice your opinions. And I think depending on the, the woman, they are reluctant to give up their opinions. Um, so I guess, you know, my biggest advice would lean into any conversation you're in. Thank you. I love that advice. It's, it's advice I haven't heard before. So I know that this is going to be beneficial to any young woman who is possibly watching this interview with you and I. So Martha, that completes our interview. I want to thank you so much for joining me this morning. This has certainly been um, a great opportunity to be able to hear your answers and how you have made it to your leadership role as a woman today. So thank you so much. And thank you.